Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing um, a music review today. So I'm going to talk about a really popular and famous album that it either most people either like or they hate. I love it. It's Neutral Milk Hotel's 1998 album, In the Aeroplane Over the Sea. Now why did I pick this one? Because one, I think it's musically brilliant, and two, because I'm sure a lot of people agree with me or at least claim this, that I can relate to it on a personal level. And I'm going to talk a little bit why. Okay, so for those of you who haven't heard it, it's a very folk, punk, psychedelic, experimental sounding album. Um, and it's largely the work of Neutral Milk Hotel's frontman, Jeff Mangum. And it's hard to explain it. It's, <clears throat> it's a combination of surrealist lyrics with experimental and very simplistic uh, folk style music. Um, sometimes just acoustic guitar and accompaniment and sometimes straight up full band uh, thrashing punk style. Um, I'm going to talk about a few songs from it and why I feel like I can relate to them. And hopefully you guys will be interested in it as well. So uh, the song I relate to the most from the album is the title track, In the Aeroplane Over the Sea. It's a very simple, very pretty, very beautiful folky tune. It has a very basic but understated guitar riff. And other instruments come in, like drums, bass, which is double bass, um, even a, a saw being played musically. And the lyrics are very abstract, very spiritual, and really hint at what the album overall hints at is largely seeming to talk about Anne Frank. But I relate to it more in the abstract sense. I relate more to it because the lyrics felt like my views on spirituality, my views on life, um, and the experiences that I would like to have in the next life if there is one. Um, also, uh, it talks about it talks about being, you know the lyrics say what a beautiful face I have found in this place that is circling all around the sun. I <clears throat> I like that because it relates to someone very special to me, and it seems to me that he's talking about in a universal sense that special someone for all of us, um, and how we want that person there with us in life and in death. At least that's how I interpret it. But an album with lyrics these abs this abstract and this level of surreal it's very easy to be interpreted no matter how you look at it you can bring your own interpretation to the table which i feel like is what art is and especially music another song i relate to is a track called two-headed boy um now not literally obviously because i only have one head but i relate to it in the sense of growing up i felt like an outcast it's because I didn't have any friends, I was shy, I was introverted, I was depressed. I didn't really know how to talk or interact with people, and I'm still a lot like that to this day. Only now it's more misanthropy than anything. Um, but in the sense of feeling like a freak, like a two-headed boy, I definitely relate to it. As well as in the sense of other things the song talks about, such as he is described as floating in a glass jar, is described as, you know, playing radio plays for two for him and his lover, who also seems to be what I can gather an outcast figure. So also, it seems to be kind of a feeling outcast, but finding that other person who also feels like an outcast and loving each other and feeling like you have that person you can connect with and being outcast together. Which, again, I can relate to. But also, you know, the way I relate to these things is a lot more in the abstract sense and in the literal, literal definition. I relate to these songs on a more metaphoric level. But then again, I've found very few songs I can relate to absolutely on a literal, yes, I've been there kind of experience. Um, another track, it's called Holland 1945. Um, this is a more up-tempo, very folk punk, full-on, flying through the track, very fast-paced, uh, Mangum spitting lyrics left and right, like 
very reminiscent of how Bob Dylan sings subterranean homesick blues in a very kind of talk rap spitting out there as fast as possible way. Um, this one is the, probably the most elusive to Anne Frank um, as far as hinting at what the overall album is about. Um, I can relate to it again in the sense of going through bad times, which the song is obviously from some of its lyrics about the Blitz, about Nazis, you know, hunting the Jews and killing people in the streets and things like that. Um, but I take it more in this, I relate more to in the sense of how we've all gone through things like that. Not obviously as bad as the Holocaust, but we've all had personal bad times and there's always been that person that we loved and that one person that, you know, you never forget about and how they're with you through those times and how you could be with them through those, through their own personal nightmares like that. And how maybe, maybe, and as corny as it sounds, I think it's maybe, could be possible, that you could still be with them again in some other life after this one. But then again, I typically don't find myself agreeing or believing anything like that. Um, the album also has another track, to a second part to Two-Headed Boy, which is called Two-Headed Boy Part 2. It closes the album, in, in my opinion, is one of the best songs I've ever heard to close an album, and done in one of the best ways I've heard to close an album. But it, it not only a continuation, but it's lyrically and atmospherically its own thing. Uh, yes, it, it's talking about the, the boy from the first song, but lyrics kind of add more to it. It's talking, seems very personally talking to about the boy's father or the narrator's father or whoever, and also about, you know, the boy's lover and how she won't always be there and how you know, he shouldn't resent her for leaving when she has to. Mm, 